An FBI document detailing Hunter Biden's work in Ukraine has been released. Republican Senator Chuck Grassley from Iowa releasing the unclassified document from the FBI laying out allegations of a $10 million bribery scheme allegedly involving then-Vice President Joe Biden and his son Hunter Biden. This document centers around claims by a Ukrainian oligarch named Mikola Zolchevsky. He's the owner of the oil company Burisma that you hear about that Hunter Biden worked for or was on that board. In the document, he claims he was coerced into making payoffs and keeping Hunter on the board of his energy company. For more on that, we'll bring in Jeffrey Lord, contributing editor with the American Spectator and former advisor in the Reagan White House. Deneen Borelli is joining us live right now as well. She's a Newsmax contributor. Thanks uh, to both of you for coming on. Welcome to National Report. To round out this Friday, let's take a look at some of these allegations. Uh, Zolchevsky said, quote, they hired Hunter Biden to protect us through his dad from all kinds of problems or problems after Joe Biden made that now famous public statement about the Ukraine prosecutor being corrupt and he should be fired. Also, quote, don't worry, Hunter will take care of all of those issues through his dad. The informant did not ask any further questions about what specifically that was meant. Um, so again, this is all according to what was in the FBI document. We don't, at this point, have verification to the authenticity of these claims. Jeffrey Lord, in your opinion, is there enough evidence here to at least look into to additional investigations? Oh, absolutely there is. You know, one of the things, you know I'm a history bug. We had a big scandal in the 1920s known as the Teapot Dome Scandal. And it involved a specific allegation of taking bribes. Uh, it, the, the bribe taker was alleged not to be the president, but uh, President Harding, but his secretary of the interior, Albert Fall, uh, who was convicted of taking a bribe and went to prison for it. So there is precedent for this kind of thing. And one other thing that I think is very noticeable, before I came on just now, I have checked uh, for the second day in a row, the front pages of the New York Times and the Washington Post. Not a word. I Not didn't say. Not a single word, which tells you, I think, in its own way, everything you need to know about this. Yeah, I did the exact same thing. Um, a, a part of my morning news ingest, I'll go through just exactly. about every publication I can uh, in the morning, and I specifically looked for this story. Could not find uh, this story. Again, um, there are more highlights from this, Deneen. I'll show you this. The informant who had provided all this information to the FBI, apparently asking Zolchevsky yes. if he'd have difficulty explaining suspicious wire transfers to the Bidens. Zolchevsky reportedly said he did not send any funds directly to, quote, the big guy, which the informant understood to be a reference to Joe Biden. Additionally, it is extremely common for businesses in Russia and Ukraine to make bribe payments to various government officials. Again, this from that 1023, the FBI document there with those allegations that are made. Deneen Chuck Grassley, the senator, wants to know what the FBI is doing about this. Um, where does this sit with you, your opinions? Well, first of all, when this first dropped yesterday, as to your point and Jeffrey's point with the media coverage, thank goodness Newsmax is all over this because I was watching the monitors at the studio and they weren't even, they were talking about the weather. Uh, but I hope folks will read this report. It's very short, three, four pages. This informant is highly credible, reliable, and a trusted FBI source. He's been around for a number of years and he is pointing out from Zol Volinsky, I can't pronounce his name. I'll call him Z. Uh, his his uh, allegations uh, that there were uh, there are uh, new. He said it would take investigators ten years to figure out the money trail. I'm paraphrasing. But under the Bidens, there are numerous shell companies. There are numerous banks. And you would think Americans will want to know more about this. This this uh, document is dated. June 2020, before the presidential election. So, yeah, what was the FBI doing, and what are they going to do now going forward? Yeah, that, that's a great question, right? Because from this information, from this document, from what the Oversight Committee has shared publicly, there are a lot of follow-up questions here. Um, and, Jeffrey, we can't ignore the fact that at the, at the heart of the matter, the Biden family is the man, of course, who's sitting in the White House right now and is planning to run for re-election. How does this, if at all, impact his presidential re-election campaign? Well, I think it could be a, a, a very big deal. And I kept thinking this morning of... Uh, 
the famous Howard Baker question. He was the senator from Tennessee who was the Republican member of the Senate Watergate Committee. And his classic question, which became the mantra for those hearings, was what did the president know and when did he know it? I think we have a right to know what this president knew about what sure. was going on here. When yeah. did he know it? And uh, we'll go from there. A lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey Lord, Denise Borelli, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Enjoy your weekend.